This is one of the most common snakes in North America, and it's actually venomous. On this episode of Animal Analysis, Thamnophis thirtalis, the common garter snake. Common garter snakes are generally considered the most common snakes in Canada and the United States. There are at least 12 subspecies, including the eastern garter snake from eastern North America, the red-sided garter snake from western and central North America, the Texas garter snake from Texas, the maritime garter snake from the maritime provinces and New England, and the red-spotted garter snake from Oregon and Washington. Common garter snakes are completely harmless to humans and rarely bite when handled. So there's not really any reason to be frightened of these snakes at all, or want to get rid of them. However, they are actually venomous. Their saliva contains a mild venom. However, this chemical is not dangerous to humans. Though some individuals may experience localized swelling if bitten by a large garter snake, but most bites don't even pierce through human skin, so... As garter snakes lack the venom-injecting fangs of other actually dangerous venomous snakes like rattlesnakes and other pit vipers. The garter snake's venom is actually meant for its prey, which is basically any animal it can fit in its mouth. Its main prey includes earthworms, small salamanders, frogs, and toads. Small fish, as well as invertebrates, all of which they swallow whole. These snakes are also resistant to tetrodotoxin and bufotoxin poisons in certain amphibians, such as the American toad, the rough-skinned newt, and the red-spotted newt. Quite impressing, as ingesting those species could even kill an adult human, mostly the newt species. It's due to this resistance that this eastern garter is able to consume this American toad without getting sick or dying. Common garter snakes are not only venomous and resistant to poison, but they're actually poisonous themselves. If you're unsure of the difference between poisonous and venomous, as many people are, remember, venomous is when a toxin is injected in, but poisonous is when a toxin enters a predator by consumption or absorption through the skin. If it bites you and you die or get sick, it's venomous. But if you eat it and you die or get sick, it's poisonous. The garter snake gains its poisonous defensive trait by consuming and retaining tetrodotoxin and bufotoxins from its amphibian prey, resulting in a buildup in its system. It's even thought that the garter snake is in an evolutionary arms race with the red spotted and rough skinned newts. Each species continually increases its resistance or the potency of its tetrodotoxin. The result of this is that populations of newts that face more predatory pressure from garter snakes have more potent toxins than populations that aren't as under as much predatory pressure. A similar pattern is observed in the garter snakes, For those populations where newts make up a larger part of their diet have higher resistance to those toxins. Despite being poisonous, common garter snakes are still preyed upon by a large number of animals, such as large fish, such as bass, as well as hawks, snapping turtles, foxes, raccoons, and large bullfrogs even. The common garter snake has a large distribution in North America, as seen on this map, pretty much everywhere except for the deserts. The common garter snake belongs to the order Squamata, along with the other lizards. Yes, I say other lizards because snakes are lizards themselves. And as the suborder Serpentes, the snakes, are right in the middle of the lizard clade. This makes them lizards due to how monophyletic groups, or clades, work. Though that requires a whole other video. The main thing is, common ancestor and all of its descendants, that's what a clade is. Since geckos and iguanas are both considered lizards, snakes have to be lizards too. Within Serpentes, it belongs to the Cyphidia order, along with 80% of snakes, within which it belongs to the family Colubridae, 
along with king snakes, rat snakes, hognose snakes, water snakes, green snakes, and even the deadly boom sling from Southeast Asia. Within the subfamily Natrosinae, the genus Semnophis appears to be sister to the water snakes of the genus Neurodia. Semnophis sortalis appears to be sister to a clade containing Semnophis soritis, the common ribbon snake, and Semnophis proximus, the western ribbon snake. The species you'd most likely confuse with the common garter snake include Themnophis butleri, which is butler's garter snake, from parts of Michigan, Wisconsin, and Ontario, the most similar species to the eastern garter snake. The butler's garter snake has a smaller neck and head, but to accurately identify one, you'll need to count the scales, starting from the ventral scales, but not including the ventral scutes. In an eastern garter, the yellow lateral stripes are confined to the second and third rows up, while the butler's yellow lateral stripes are on the upper second row, the full third row, as well as the lower fourth row. The second species you're likely to confuse the common garter snake for is Semnophis sortus, the common ribbon snake from eastern North America. The ribbon snake has a longer tail, as well as no stripes on the supralabials, which are the upper lip scales, as well as a white crescent on the preocular scales in front of the eyes. They also have a slightly different coloring. Common garter snakes can be found in forests, fields, and even urban areas, but are most common in wetlands or near tall grass near the edges of ponds, lakes, or rivers. They are fine to gently pick up and handle, as bites are rare and aren't dangerous, though they are much more likely to musk on you, that is, secrete a foul-smelling fluid from glands near the anus at the base of the tail. <laughs> it smells pretty bad. But I must remind you, if you're not 100% certain on the identification of a snake, do not pick it up. Don't need anyone going out there picking up venomous snakes. Just not worth it. Common garter snakes are an incredibly interesting species. Until next time on Animal Analysis.